Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and I just watched the official trailer of Spider-Man No Way Home at 0.2 Febic speed. I can't put into words what I was actually feeling while watching the trailer for the first time. And I love how John Watts, the director of the movie, has shared the trailer on Instagram like this along with the caption that says, the way the director intended. Now I'm gonna be breaking down scene by scene so I might spoil a lot of the movie for you. So if you want a clean experience in the theater, I'd suggest you click away right now. If not, then let's just jump into it. So the trailer opens with MJ and Peter talking to each other on a rooftop. MJ is holding a newspaper and reading a specific article that says, people suggest that one of Peter Parker's powers includes the male spider's ability of hypnotizing women. This is sort of foreshadowing what is about to unfold in the trailer. By the middle of the movie, Peter will essentially make Doctor Strange hypnotize the entire world into forgetting his alter identity. Now there are a couple of details I found in this scene. Notice MJ is using her backpack as her pillow, but Peter is only using a book. This is because Peter lost his backpack in Spider-Man Far From Home, which actually keeps happening again and again due to his line of work. I need a new backpack. What? Now the front page of the newspaper not only talks about Peter Parker and his secret identity of Spider-Man, but notice it also painted Ned and MJ both as accomplices in Peter's crimes. Now MJ and Peter lying around on a rooftop could be another callback to the original MJ and Peter from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. Um, one last detail from this scene would be this graffiti on the wall behind Peter and MJ. It says Ditko. Now Steve Ditko co-created both Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, and now we are finally getting a solo movie where these two are together. But in the hindsight, it could be a reference to Mr. Ditkovich. Give me rent. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! We then see Spider-Man and MJ flying around New York. Now this is after the big mysterious reveal, just like they were swinging around the city before getting the shocking news. But now they're both trying to get somewhere safe. I kind of feel bad for MJ who said this at the end of Far From Home. This is... Never, never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. But now he's being forced to take a ride again with Peter in order to escape from the police. Now notice MJ was so scared, she was literally blocking Peter's view with her hand. We get a voiceover from J. Jonah Jameson, played by Jacob Simmons, says that Spider-Man is in fact Peter Parker. MJ and Peter then fly past this picture of Peter, which is half him and half Spider-Man. This could again be directly taken from the comics, and it matches with the merchandising of the film as well. We then see Peter now in a police station, where this could be Matt Murdock, aka Daredevil. He does possess a similar sort of physique and the way Marvel totally avoided showing us his face kinda tells us something. So the plot leaks could turn out to be true and this may as well be Matt himself who came here to defend Peter. We then see Peter handcuffed to a desk, which I find pretty funny considering Peter has enough strength to take down this entire station by himself but he chose to comply with the law of course. And notice he's actually in his sweatpants which tells us the police didn't give him any time, they just apprehended him. Now Peter keeps saying he did not kill Mysterio, the drones did, which is exactly what happened. But the police of course still accuses Peter of the murder and says but the drones are yours. Which also makes sense because the drones were essentially his. He was the chosen one by Tony Stark to take control of the drones. So inadvertently when a crime is committed through these drones, Peter is gonna be the prime suspect. Especially when there's fabricated proof showing that Peter really ordered the kill on Mysterio. And I love the t-shirt Tom is wearing here that says physics is theoretical but the fun is real. Just like the theory of the multiverse in real life. It's all theoretical but it surely sounds a lot fun. Cut to MJ lying in her bed and is on a video video call with Peter. And none of them are using headphones. I mean, come on, Peter, you gotta use headphones with your girl. Come on. Now, we do see a lot of sketches of people just hanging around near MJ's bed. This is a great continuity detail, as whip seen in Spider-Man Homecoming, that MJ used to make sketches of people during her detention in school. Precisely this sketch that she made of Coach Wilson. This sketch is right here on the wall as well. Now, another awesome continuity detail I found is this picture. Even though it's not that clear, but we can take out that there are a lot of pigeons in the picture. And when did MJ come across a lot of pigeons in one place? Exactly. When she went on the school trip to Rome and Brad Davis took this picture of her. So this exact same photo has now been framed and MJ hanged it on her wall. She has a lot of books in her room, as well as a few just beside her bed, which again aligns perfectly with her character. Now MJ asks Peter, doesn't a part of you feel relieved about all this? So basically she's trying to see the brighter side of this whole fiasco. However, Peter says he lies about his identity to keep everyone around him safe. And for the record, he never lied to MJ because he wanted to, he lied to her because he had to. Now notice Peter is lying on a couch while MJ is in bed. This tells me that Peter is still on the run during this scene. He's staying somewhere else for safety. Perhaps at a feast facility? I'll talk more about it in a minute. Cut to outside the courthouse where Peter, Ned, MJ, and probably Flash Thompson are being taken for trial. Now Flash over here looks a lot different, mostly because of his blonde hair. Now in the comics, his character was actually blonde. I love how comic accurate things are getting as we move forward. Now it's nice to see Flash standing up beside Peter, as he has been a diehard fan of Spider-Man. So knowing that Peter is in fact Spider-Man, I guess he changed his view about Peter and decided 
decided to amend things with him. Now, with all this media coverage, this is surely a very high profile case, which is not good news for Peter Parker. You notice outside the court, among all these news reporters, one of them is Betty Brandt, played by Anguri Rice. I wasn't sure if this was really her until I saw the next scene, where we can clearly see her name on the TV at the school. Now, that's some promotion, eh? Going from beginner level journalism to actual journalism. Now, I have no clue why Peter would go to school so soon after such a big incident, but notice he's wearing the same shirt here that he was wearing while going to the court. So it could be that Peter came to his school and then was taken to the court. Cut to the next scene where Peter and Aunt May are watching the Daily Bugle. Now judging by the looks on their face, someone has clearly walked into their room and they're not sure what to do about it. Now this could either be Toby Maguire or Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker, given the flash of bright red in the window across the room as it plays out. Now I should add there's a similar red flare behind the red table lamp as well, so perhaps it's merely the lamp being reflected as the camera enters the room and changes perspective. However, the dimensions and the positioning of the two red flashes aren't exactly the same as the lampshade, as one would expect in a reflection. Thanks to Ian Hayward for sending me this awesome piece of detail. But I personally think this red flare of the police waiting outside, because if you notice Peter's clothes, he's wearing the same sweats and t-shirt that we've seen him wear inside the police station. So this is probably moments before Peter's arrest. We see both Ned and Aunt May also being questioned by the police. Cut to Peter who gets the idea of asking for help from Doctor Strange, seeing this wizard lights from some Halloween decoration. We get a voiceover from Peter saying this isn't about me, this is hurting a lot of people. This one line is enough to tell just how big of a superhero Peter Parker has become. Doctor Strange had to spend an entire movie learning this lesson. It's precisely what kept you from greatness. Which is? It's not about you which Peter learned already while still being a teenager. Cut to the Sanctum Sanctorum, where Stephen Strange welcomes Peter and asks what is the matter. Now, of course, this whole Sanctum is round with snow, which may have a funny reason behind it, and that is Bruce Banner making this huge hole in the Sanctum during the events of Infinity War. With Strange snapped away, there wasn't anybody to repair this hole in the Sanctum. But what bugs me here is that Strange can literally make fire out of nothing through magic, and still he's making someone else shovel the snow. But that's not the biggest issue here. The problem is Doctor Strange himself. This version of Strange is really strange, and he acts quite sus throughout the entire first half of the trailer. We get a funny exchange between Peter and Strange, a nice little callback to Infinity War where something similar happened. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Um, I'm Spider-Man then. Now, I don't know why I find this whole new outfit of Strange very funny. I mean, he wouldn't wear a jacket like this just before a fight, would you? So why did he still put on the cape? Peter then asks Strange if he can go back in time and make everyone forget Spider-Man's true identity. Because ever since Mysterio revealed his true identity, his life got screwed up. So he asks Doctor Strange if he could go back in time and fix it. Surprisingly, Strange does agree to help Peter by wiping everyone's memory. Then we see Wong for the first time who warns Steven, saying don't cast that spell, it's too dangerous. So Steven says he won't, but winks at Peter, implying he will in fact cast a spell and get Peter out of his misery. I mean, I understand Peter being a kid coming up with such a big request, but doesn't it show Strange's lack of sensibility when he agreed to do it? There could have been other ways to do it other than wiping everyone's memory. Now, after Peter tampers with the spell and unleashes the multiverse, we may have gotten a clue of what exactly happened. Notice there was just one mystical circle around them at the beginning of the spell, but as the spell starts to go wrong, it multiplies into three, but then Strange loses control over it completely. So these three mystical loops could be representing each timeline of three different Spider-Man. So when Strange lost control, it started to entangle with each other, therefore opening the doors of the Spider-Verse. Now when the spell goes wrong, we can clearly see the glimpses of the color purple, which might indicate the spell going wrong may have something to do with dark magic. It's not entirely Peter's fault. Or the shattered place that we've seen when the spell went wrong could be the Citadel of Time, meaning the home of Kang the Conqueror. So maybe Strange's spell didn't work because of the absence of He Who Remains. The multiverse already started branching in Loki, not just because of Peter. Cut to a shelter house where Peter is seemingly wearing the black and golden suit. Now notice Peter actually takes off his mask without worrying about getting caught, implying the people over here may know who he is. And that brings me to Fist. Now for those of you who don't know, Fist is a non-profit organization that takes care of New York's homeless. It was also featured in the 2018 Spider-Man video game. In the comics, Aunt May works for this organization. Now also in the MCU, we've seen Aunt May at the beginning of Far From Home doing a lot of charity work for people who lost their homes due to the blip. So in both the comics and in the MCU, Aunt May is heavily involved with helping the homeless. So it makes absolute sense that Peter may have taken shelter here to hide away from the police. And that's why he doesn't care about taking off his mask. Not only that, he was actually chasing someone here in this scene. And this guy is essentially helping Peter by showing him which way to go. Now this black and golden suit was of course shown during the promo materials. And this looks like a suit made to withstand attacks from Electro. Now notice the golden stripes on the suit are not that visible. Keep it in mind, I'll talk about it in a minute. We then see time and space bending and twisting around Spider-Man just like we've seen at the end of Doctor 
Doctor Strange. So this is probably Doctor Strange now chasing Spider-Man inside the mirror dimension. I think I may know why Doctor Strange is all of a sudden chasing Peter, but my answer might spoil the movie for you, so please be advised. According to a plot leak, after Strange mastered the spell he was performing for Peter, he had to imprison villains from other universes until he could send them back to their respective realities. Now Strange had a mystical box holding everything together, basically making it possible to keep all these villains in prison. But Peter gets brainwashed by Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, as he says to Peter that if they're sent back to their reality, they will be killed by their version of Peter Parker. So Tom's Peter feels empathetic and steals the box from Strange's vault. That's why there's a massive chasing sequence in the film between Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. Strange throws everything at his disposal to stop Peter, but then he finally catches Peter with the box on his hand and separates his body from his astral form. Now Peter's astral form of course wears a different outfit than his physical self, maintaining the continuity of Endgame, where Bruce Banner was wearing different clothes than Professor Hulk. Now if you're wondering what this box really contains, it is one of the ghost boxes that exists in the Marvel Universe. A ghost box opens gates between parallel worlds. It's basically a way of traveling between the multiverse. And notice how angry Doctor Strange looks over here. It's because Peter really made him run for his money during the whole chase. But then comes one of the big reveals, Electro. This yellow lightning is basically a direct clue of his involvement. Now Jamie Foxx is officially returning to reprise his role of Electro, and Marvel has switched his color from blue to yellow in order to make it more comic accurate. Notice how all these police officers are looking up. This makes it even more certain that Electro is up there. And just beside that we can see a van of the Daily Bugle. We then see an upgraded version of the Iron Spider suit, which looks incredible just to look at. Happy is then apprehended, who is probably trying to get to Peter or helping Peter to escape, or he's helping Aunt May, as we know this to share a romantic relationship and that would really make sense. Now Strange mentions how Peter living a double life is basically what causes all these issues. Had Peter not needed to keep MJ, Ned and Aunt May's memory, he wouldn't have interrupted the spell, meaning the spell would have gone smoothly, therefore the doors of the multiverse wouldn't have opened. But of course the fact that Sylvie killed He Who Remains at the end of Loki might have something to do with it. We are then introduced to two more villains, the Lizard from Amazing Spider-Man 1 and Sandman from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. But notice in this shot, this red flare does look like another Spider-Man. I mean, there were multiple instances in the trailer that show both Toby and Andrew are definitely coming back. And remember I told you to keep in mind the golden stripes of Peter's suit? It wasn't that visible in that scene. However, in this scene, the stripes are fairly visible and they're more white-ish, which may indicate that this is Toby's Spider-Man from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. Now another figure emerges from the sand and even though it's really tough to see, but it does seem like Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. We then get the money shot of the trailer, Willem Dafoe's pumpkin bomb making an official appearance in the MCU. Now it's it's only a matter of time until we see Defoe as Green Goblin in the MCU. Then we meet this lady. Now this could be the MCU hinting towards Miles Morales, and this could be his mother. Now notice the suit and shirt Peter is wearing here. This is the exact same outfit Toby McGuire had back in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Now if you know about movies, you know that nothing about them are coincidences. So Marvel deliberately made Tom Holland wear a similar sort of suit as Toby McGuire. And then we get the biggest reveal of the trailer, Alfred Molina returning as Dr. Octopus after 18 years. The first thing we hear him say is Hello Peter. Now notice he's probably not saying this to Tom's Peter, because if you compare the background side by side, it doesn't match. It doesn't look like they're from the same scenes. This Peter suit up scene and the Doc Ock scene are taken from two different sequences, but are put together for the trailer to throw us off. In fact, if you pay attention, the suit up scene is more compatible to this scene where we see the Iron Spider suit. So I think this is Dr. Octopus saying Hello Peter to Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, not Tom Holland's. Now if you take a look at the place where the pumpkin bomb goes off and blasts everything, we can see multiple construction barrels or drums lying around in the road. The same drums can be spotted again behind Peter when we see him donning the Iron Spider suit. So there we go. Peter suiting up and fighting on top of this bridge is not against Dr. Octopus as we're made to believe. Instead, it is against Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. That's the magic of clever editing. It can be deceiving if you don't pay attention. And that's it. This would be my breakdown of the Spider-Man No Way home trailer at 0.25 big speed. I hope I was able to give you lads a few new details that I didn't notice before. If I did, then please give me a thumbs up, grab the subscribe button, and turn notifications on for more of these breakdowns. Coming up next, what if episode so 3 in point to fabric speed. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get updates about my videos. Till then, I'll see you lads in the next one. What the